Hello and welcome to our bridge making journey. In this video we will include the way we created two bridges made out of spaghetti and seeing how much load it can hold. To begin our bridge making journey, the four of us collaborated to think about the possibilities of what our bridge design would look and perform like. We conducted a lot of research on the different types of trusses we could build, even looking at the world record breaking spaghetti bridge holding 570 kilograms. We needed a design that would suit our cognitive bridge making skills and what it would hold at the most load possible. We made a start by determining what the shape of our bridge to include four components with them being the top cord, the bottom cord and the two end posts. Now onto the planning stage of our trial bridge. After our extensive research and collaboration, we looked at several designs that could be contenders for construction. As you can see, we considered uh, truss designs like, like using K joints or adding additional support below the bridge. But after a lot of thought, drawing and discussion, we decided on a design that we all agreed on, which involved a basic design of six miniature triangles, as we thought the more triangles we utilized, the stronger our bridge would be for the load testing. After drawing on paper, using a Sharpie, we drawn our design in full size as a template when we start construction. To begin constructing our bridge, we first got supplies from the local Woolworths as they supplied us the spaghetti, super glue, straws for our columns, foil and gloves. The tools that we bought from home were Stanley knives, rulers and drawing essentials. Safety was number one in this project as we ensured to use gloves every time we would use super glue and being cautious of using Stanley knives. The reason we used straws and Stanley knives as we thought it would be an easy way of constructing our columns making them even and thick to ensure that they won't snap so easily. As we got through our construction, we completed one truss at a time and soon enough we completed our trial bridge. Now it is time for the trial bridge test. We immediately found out that our first major problem for when we create our final bridge is that there was minimal room to place the testing plate in the bottom of our bridge. So we just had to make do with this and place the plate where we could. As the lever continued to spin, we thought our bridge was really solid until we found the bottom beams had snapped and the test was concluded. We recorded a total load of 5 kilograms, which we thought was a solid start, but and with a little more thought and change of our design, we could definitely improve on this result. So we had a solid test and there was plenty of room for improvement within our bridge. Our first initial problem we occurred mentioned before was that we needed more room for the plate to place on for our test to be even more successful. As you can see is a closer look at the bottom cords of each truss snapped, which is where the load was focused on during most of this initial test. We needed to rethink our design to meet these new design specifications to construct our bridge for optimal improvement. The planning stage of our final bridge was a long process as we went back and forth between a few designs we could use, but our main aspect that we were focusing on was a way that we can make our bridge strong in the middle and, and the bottom cords to improve. So we drawn a design still utilising four triangles on the ends of the bridge while ensuring the centre of the bridge had enough room for the testing plate. We were confident with our thick columns and strong side cords that we can make it work in construction. Now was time to construct our final bridge. With our designs finalised, it was time to create our final bridge using similar processes with when we constructed the trial bridge. Processes of drawing our design on foil as a template, creating our columns, cutting the columns to exact measurements of what we had on the template, gluing the trusses together one at a time and finally um, both trusses were completed. We then glued the two trusses together. The reason we used foil um, in all this was the super glue wouldn't stick to it. The big day. Now it was time to test how much load our bridge can actually take, hoping for major improvement. As we pulled the lever more and more, the bridge was really solid until it didn't actually snap, but our glue failed us as there was one part that wasn't glued properly. This was a bit of a letdown at first, but we kept our heads high 
as all through this we actually got a slight improvement from five kilograms in our trial bridge to holding six kilograms now. To recap, the design, construction and testing of our, of our spaghetti bridge, we found it was a great learning opportunity and a little taste of what this whole process would be like when we become construction managers in the real world. We did make a slight improvement which shows that we adapted to change really well and overall we collaborated as a group really well as we spent a lot of hours together to complete both bridges. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching our bridge making journey.